new videos every day. Do you feel like you've done a million diets and no matter what, you just can't lose the weight? Do you feel like everybody in your family is fat, so I'm just destined to be fat my whole life. I must have that fat gene. Well, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about that today. My name is Christine Marquette, and I'm a registered and licensed dietitian. I'm also a certified health fitness specialist through the American College of Sports Medicine, and I practice nutrition at Marquette Nutrition and Fitness in Austin, Texas. When you look at what's been going on, particularly in the United States over the last couple of decades, the rates of obesity are just skyrocketing all across this country. There's tons of maps if you go to different websites. You can Google or Bing, whichever your search engine preference is. You can actually Google obesity maps or obesity in the United States, and you will see over the years how each state the rate of obesity has increased. And it is increasing exponentially, where more than a third of adults in America are now classified as not just overweight, but it's actually obese. And in some states and in some cities, it's much higher than that. So why do I bring that up? And why am I saying that when we, when we want to talk about genes and whether your genetic profile dictates whether you're going to be overweight? Well, I bring that up because genetics don't change that rapidly. They're not going to change in 5, 10, 15, 20 years. It takes a much longer period of time to see complete changes in generations and how their genetic profile will change. So that leads me to believe that it's not just your genes that have an impact on your weight. True, they are, they're one of the factors that have an impact on your weight. It's, it's definitely something that if you come from a family background where everybody's obese or overweight, you're probably gonna have to work harder than the average person if you wanna maintain a normal weight or if you want to be thin, but it's not impossible. I think a bigger factor is really our environment. Again, when you look at statistics and how things have changed with our lifestyle, for one thing, our lifestyle is much more sedentary than it used to be. How many times do you go through a drive through to get food? You don't even have to get out of your car to get food to eat anymore. When you go home and you want to watch TV, nobody gets up to turn their TV on or to change a channel. We all have the clicker, we all have a remote, so we don't even have to get up to do that. Um, and what if your batteries ran out of your remote? Chances are you're probably not gonna get <laughs> up and change the channel. You're gonna sit there and watch whatever is on at that particular moment. Um, and look at our, our transportation. Most of us don't walk to work, most of us don't ride our bikes to work, and that used to be a lot easier to do. But even our city planning in a lot of cities throughout America, it doesn't help us to actually be more active because of what is referred to as suburban sprawl, meaning there are not necessarily a lot of people who live downtown, a lot of people live outside of the city and they drive into the city to work. So they have to, they have to commute and it's such a long distance that it would make it impossible for them to be able to cycle or to be able to, to walk to work and that type of thing. So even our, just the way our society is planned, urban designing and that type of thing, it makes it a little bit more difficult to be physically active if you're not going out of your way to be physically active. If you work in high rise, how many people actually take the stairs up to their floor? Most people are going to take the elevator or if there's an escalator. Some of you maybe have even seen there's a, a famous photograph of a 24-hour fitness that is up, the entrance is up on the second floor and there are escalators to get in and out of the 24 hour fitness. This is a gym we're talking about and people are still not walking up the stairs <laughs> to get to a gym to exercise. So that's, that's a huge factor as well, lack of physical activity. I mentioned briefly the drive-through fast food places. That's another big factor, what we're putting into our bodies, the types of foods that we're actually choosing to eat. There are some, some studies that show that the calories that we're eating haven't increased significantly over time. They have increased a little bit. The biggest change is the fact that we're not eating healthy foods. We're eating a lot of empty calories. So when you hear people say calories in, calories out, that's only true to a certain extent. Your, your type of calorie does matter. The quality of your calories does matter. For example, if you were to eat a diet completely of Skittles or some other, you know, just high sugary um, food, you know, something that's just candy or, or um, 
a beverage that doesn't have any nutritional value to it other than that it's got a lot of calories, it's filled with sugar, it doesn't have any vitamins or minerals or protein to speak of, eventually you're going to start suffering some health problems. You need vitamins and minerals to function. Uh, for example, your B vitamins, those are primarily found in fruits and vegetables. Some of the B vitamins are also found in, in different types of um, meats and poultry and seafood and that type of thing. Those directly impact your metabolism. They, some of them um, work as cofactors or coenzymes to act as catalysts to help your metabolism work efficiently. Well, if you're not getting those in your diet on a regular basis, your metabolism isn't going to work correctly. It's going to slow down. It's not going to actually process all of your food so that you get the most benefit from them. So from that perspective, you know, again, your quality of calories does matter. If you're actually eating a lot of health, fresh, uh, healthy fresh foods, you're going to be getting those different vitamins and minerals so that you are supporting your metabolism and it is working more effectively. You are burning up everything that you're eating um, to use for energy rather than just storing it all as fat because your body can't access it because it's not metabolizing it properly. So you need to make sure that you're getting variety in your diet, that you're getting a lot of other things to eat, not just um, high sugary items. Uh, by the same token, say maybe you're, you're thinking, well, you know, I'm not much of a sweet eater. I don't drink sodas. You know, I don't really eat a lot of candy or that kind of thing. Um, but maybe you have more of um, a preference for salty foods, high fat foods, say fried potato chips, something like that, that has a lot of fat in it, has a lot of salt, um, has a lot of um, low fiber carbohydrate. And when I say low fiber carb, I mean a carb that you're going to digest super quickly um, that's still just as bad as eating candy or some type of sugary soft drink. Not a lot of vitamins and minerals in that either. But on top of just um, the, the poor carbohydrate choice, you're also getting a lot of the bad kind of fat, the fat that's not necessarily the best for your heart. So again, you're not providing your body with the nutrients that it needs to work properly. So poor eating habits, lack of physical activity, combined with your genetic profile, those are the things that impact your weight. But for two thirds of the population, their genes don't have anything to do with it. You know, it's the fact that they are making those poor choices regarding their nutrition and their physical activity. For the people who do have a genetic factor, even these people don't necessarily have to be overweight. But again, it is imperative that they work harder at getting more physical activity at making those better choices because if you have that kind of genetic background it's you're going to you are going to gain weight easier again it's it's a factor but not for the rates of obesity that we're seeing another thing to keep in mind that at this point in time there are actually DNA tests that people can have done. Very easy. Um, it's just a matter of a, a saliva swab. Uh, there's a few different companies that are offering them now. And, and the research has been conducted, I would say, over about the last 20 to 30 years. And it's been recently in the last few years that a lot of this has gone to market. And what these types of tests will tell you, they will tell you based on your own genetic profile, your own DNA, um, what you would benefit most from, whether you would benefit from a low-fat diet or a high-fat diet, specifically what type of fat. And for most people, it's not going to be the bad fat. You know, it's not going to be trans fat. It's going to be things like you need more monounsaturated fat or you need more polyunsaturated fat. Um, other people may find that they need a more balanced diet. And by that, I mean an even split between their carbohydrate, their protein, and their fat. So there are different types of... Um, breakdowns of nutrition that impact us all differently. A lot of these tests will also tell you what type of exercise is best for your body type, whether you're somebody who would benefit more from high intensity exercise, um, or if you're somebody who would benefit more from lower or more moderate intensity exercise, but for longer duration. So again, those things, they do have um, some impact on your weight but they're not the only thing. They're just one part of the whole picture. So if you've been getting really discouraged by your weight and the fact that you've tried a million different diets, really take a step back and look and see what your lifestyle is like. You know, if you're getting enough good sleep, sleep is another factor that impacts your weight. If you're not getting plenty of good sleep, your cortisol levels become elevated and that's basically a stress hormone. And when you have that level elevated, 
for an extended period of time, it contributes to extra fat, particularly in your abdominal region. So you want to look at your sleep habits. You want to look at your stress management. If you're not managing your stress well, that's another contributing factor. You want to look at exactly what you're eating, what type of physical activity you're doing, and then look at your family background. You know, so take all of that into account. Another area that can impact your weight is if you are reacting to specific foods, some, not necessarily a food allergy, but maybe a food sensitivity. Very frequently, if you're having uh, sensitivities to particular foods, it can cause some fluid retention. So that's another area to consider. Um, and with any of these things, you know, if you, if you feel like, well, you know, I'm really not under a lot of stress, um, I'm getting plenty of sleep, I think I get a lot of exercise, and I don't feel like I'm eating um, necessarily bad foods, then that's when, you know, again, looking at possibly getting the DNA testing done or getting tested for food sensitivities may be your best option. At that point, you can figure out if you are eating a lot of foods that are causing you to react and therefore retain a lot of water or just increase a lot of the inflammation in your body. Um, or if you're doing all these exercises at the wrong intensity level for your particular body type. And then lastly, outside of these things, the physical activity, the food, genetics, there is another impact um, regarding our environment outside of these things. And by that, I mean toxins. There are a lot of toxins that we're exposed to depending on your water. If you have happened to live in a city where maybe your water is not the greatest, um, and you haven't made the investment in getting a filter or buying water or things like that, a lot of times your water can actually be filled with a lot of chemicals that can disrupt your hormones in your body. Um, the other issue is, again, the foods that you're eating. If you're eating a lot of processed foods that may have come from um, items that were exposed to a lot of environmental toxins, that's another area to look at. And Regarding processed foods, if you use a lot of canned items, there has been some recent um, studies that have shown the liners in canned foods can leach BPA into the food, and that's a known hormone disruptor. So if you, or another thing is if you've been using plastic bottles that are not BPA free, that's another way you could have gotten exposed to BPA, and that itself can disrupt your hormones. So it may not have been your genetics at all. You know, it could have been the fact that you were exposed to all these environmental toxins and have been for a number of years, and that's the other reason that you haven't been able to lose weight. So again, there's a number of factors that can impact your weight, but I don't want you to feel like you have to be relegated based on your family history, based on your family's weight. You don't have the fat gene. You know, look at, look at some of these other areas and hopefully that'll help you get on the right path. So thank you very much for watching. If you want any more information, please feel free to visit my website, marquettenutrition.com. And we're so glad that you watched this video. Please give us a thumbs up and um, add this channel to your favorites. Thanks a lot.